Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. If you watched my last video, you know I'm doing a few quick videos on ASP.NET 9. Today we're going to be talking about static assets. It's one of the first things that the first version of ASP.NET Core, and in .NET 9 we're going to have a new way to approach it. So what we're going to talk about today is kind of simple. In most ASP.NET projects, you're going to need to be able to deliver static assets. Now, if you're just creating API servers, this may not apply to you, but lots of different applications in ASP.NET Core need to be able to supply static assets. And what I mean by static assets are images, JavaScript files, CSS, etc. Everything that can be delivered to the browser. And even if you're using something like Vue or React to build your applications, those applications still still tend to be static assets that are delivered to the browser. While the way we've been doing it for a long time works, Microsoft has added a new way to handle it that makes it go a little faster. While the old way of doing this worked, Microsoft has a little gift for people where this may become an issue, especially if you have lots and lots of files to distribute. Let's get started. So here I am in Visual Studio, same project I've been doing a lot of my demos with, this little address book I have out there. And essentially, I have some static assets. I happen to have a whole bunch of JavaScript files that are containing my view app. In my case, I'm taking this view app and I'm publishing it into WW root. I'd like to make this a little bit faster. So over here in the project, I'm using use static files to do this. It's been the tried and true method since the first iterations of .NET Core. And this works fine, but let's see what it actually does. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and we're going to do a little trick here. I'm going to change this to show us just JavaScript files and we'll see we got a, a number of them. It might download more later, but for now this is good enough and this index first file is actually the bootstrap for my view app. And if we try to make this a little bigger, when it went and got this, it requested it, but what it got in the response is what's interesting. So it contains an e tag. This e tag is the version of the file, and this is computed every time we do a request. So this e tag is generally a key that is developed based on the contents of the file. And where it can, ASP.NET caches that value. This is essentially so that the browser doesn't re download it if it hasn't changed. I talk about e-tags in one of my other videos, and I'll link that in the description below. But that's all fine, right? What's happening when we get that response happens to be all this text. And when possible, it's also compressing it. You'll see here that when we made the request, we said if it's gzip, deflate, br, etc., if those are supported, then we're going to get it in a compressed form. And that compression is happening on the server. So how does that change with our new method? Let's open our project, and let's just change it to 9. You don't have to update anything because we're just moving to the newest version of the web SDK. I'm using preview six as of right now. And all I'm going to do is change this to map static assets. That is the code change. Map static assets has some limitations. It doesn't work well if you have more than one directory for static assets or you have multiple of these running. But for the most part, it works pretty well. And let's see what happens. Let's just run it again. And if we repeat the same step, take a look at that. It doesn't look like a lot has changed. You'll see that the E tag is now longer than it was before. And what you'll actually see here is two E tags. First one is a strong, essentially, version. And this is with the W slash on it is what they call a weak one. So if you're getting at something really quickly, you can actually use the weak one. And it depends on your browser or who's getting this information. It may, may not even be a browser, which of these they're going to use. Yeah, the key is different, but it's ostensibly not that big a change. And just like before, we can say that it'll accept gzip version. You have to actually delve a little into what's happening here on the server, and more importantly, at build time, not at runtime. So let's stop this for a moment. So let's go ahead and show all the files so that we get access to the bin and obj directories. And I'm going to dive into debug and nine of that obj directory. We can see there's two folders here, compressed and static web assets. These are new when you use map static assets. So if we open this, we can actually see a number of files here. And I'm just going to open the first one. And this is a XML that basically tells it how it wants to point at new files. So the bottom one here is actually just that index HTML. HTML, that first one. And it has a bunch of values in here that tell it about the different pieces. And so this is essentially a hint at what to do when someone requests that index HTML, right? But if we look at compressed, you can see all these .gz 
Z files. So what it's actually doing is taking all those assets that we might need and it's compressing them at build time not at runtime anymore. So this should be much more efficient at actually delivering them. Now, again, if you have 12 files, it doesn't matter which way you choose, but just as a drop in replacement for you static files, I think the map static assets can be a help. Every little bit helps in these cases, both to improve that compression isn't taking up valuable CPU time, but also that the E tags are gonna be more aggressive at allowing the browser to cache it. In fact, the new E tags, I read this a few days ago, so forgive me if I'm wrong, but they represent basically a key to the version of the file that we had before, and it's base64 encoded instead of it being just a magic number like it was before. I hope that helps. So you may look at this as a tiny little optimization and that Microsoft is still trying to find ways to make some things better. But there's a few things that encourage me about this. One, they're looking at a real problem that is sites with a lot of assets that end up spending a lot of CPU time compressing them instead of just having them pre-compressed, as well as more friendly to browsers using e-tags to ensure that the caching is happening as much as possible. But it also tells me that Microsoft isn't trying to reinvent everything. Everything. You static files isn't going away. Tons and tons of code out there use it, and they're not saying you should be switching over to this in every case, but now gives us an option for certain kinds of ASP.NET projects that we build that might benefit from this. Make sense? Until next time, this has been Sean Wildermuth. Thanks for watching.